श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम विल बी एंटरिंग द सिक्सटीन चैप्टर ऑफ श्रीमद भगवद गीता इन इंट्रोडक्शन टू दिस चैप्टर भगवान शंकर राइट्स दैवी आसुरी राक्षसी इति प्राणीना प्रकृत नवमे अध्याय सूचिता विस्तरेण प्रदर्शनाय अभय सत्व संशुद्धि इत्यादि अध्याय आरभ्य इन द नाइन्थ चैप्टर भगवान हेज स्पोकन ऑफ दीज टू टाइप्स ऑफ प्रकृति वन इज दैवी प्रकृति एंड द सेकेंड वन इज दी आसुरी एज वेल एज दी राक्षसी प्रकृति नो दो आर हैविंग द दैवी प्रकृति दे आर द सीकर्स ऑफ समथिंग हाइयर महात्मनस्तु मां पार्थ दैवी प्रकृति आश्रिता भयंती अन्य मनसा ज्ञावा भूतादी अव्यय दो आर द सीकर्स ऑफ समथिंग हाइयर इन लाइफ दे आर बॉर्न विथ these qualities which are called as daivi which were not much explained in the ninth chapter to explain this topic bhagwan has started the 16 chapter similarly <coughs> moghasha mogha karmana ha moga jnana vichet saha rakshasim asurim chaiva prakriti mohinim sritaha those who are having moghasha uh, mo vain hopes moga karmana vain activities moga jnana vain knowledge and vichet saha those who are not having some higher orientation in life they are under the influence of this rakshasi and asurim prakriti now what are these two types of uh two types of mental dispositions daivi on one side asuri and rakshasi on other side this was not explained in detail in the ninth chapter so to complete that the seventh chapter the 16th chapter begins this is how this adhyaya aarabhyate further what is the purpose of telling these two types of qualities of the mental disposition tatra samsara mokshaya daivi prakriti hi those who are following this divine disposition daivi prakriti it is a means to attain freedom from relative existence please remember this simple definition of samsara as relative existence and what this indicates in relativity there is no absolute solution to anything in relative existence we cannot get absolute joy and therefore freedom from relativity is the real freedom all other freedoms which keep us in the relative world it is a relative freedom for example this word amruta immortality comes in our scriptures there are three kinds of uh, amruta or the nectars one is the nectar or amruta of this mortal world and that is called as food because hunger is the disease and this hunger disease can be removed by the food then the second one is the amruta or the nectar of the heavens which was discovered by these devas and the asuras when they were churning the milky ocean and which was distributed by the lord taking the mohini avatar and there these rahu and ketu were created 
that was the amruta or the nectar of the heavens but that is also in relation to the mortal experience mortal experiences have six points which are those we are told you jara mrutyu ashana pipasa and shoka moha so belonging to the gross body pranamay kosha and the manomay kosha now this three things are absent in the heavens where the old age and disease hunger and thirst shoka moha do not any more function in our life that is gained by taking the second kind of amruta or the nectar from the heavens but that is also relative it's not absolute in relation to the mortality yes it is great but still it falls in the purview of the relativity because kshine punne marte lokam vishanti after our merits are exhausted again we fall back to the mortal world so there is a third kind of immortality and that is absolute immortality te brahma lokeshu parant kale paramrutat parimuchanti sarve he those who have transcended the relativity for good and are established in the absolute self they alone have attained immortality in the right sense this is what is called here tatra samsara mokshaya daivi prakriti hi so this divine disposition is essential for attainment of liberation from relativity and nibandhanaay asuri rakshasi cha iti and if we are under the influence of the rakshasi and the asuri asuri means what indulgent rakshasi means what perverted these are the two words which we can translate uh, asura we have told you in our ishavasya upanishad commentary who are the asura asusu ramante iti asuraha those who are all the time uh, reveling in the indulgence of the worldly objects they are called as asuras or the materialist and rakshasas are who those who are educated illiterate they are perverted people like the naxalites the terrorists they fall in the purview of the perversion so rakshasi acts asuri iti cha nibandhanaay they tie us down they bind us in the relative existence so rakshasi asuri cha iti daivya adanaay pradarshanam kriyat pradarshanam kriyate itarayo parivarjanaay now between these two types of prakrutis daivya adanaay this divine uh attitudes are to be cultivated and nurtured and the itaraha the other rakshasi and asuri parivarjanaya they should be avoided they should be rejected to tell this the 16th chapter of gita begins now here as i told you elsewhere also whenever we study these qualities we will study them one by one you know what happens when there something good is spoken of we find an example in ourselves are it is about me only when something bad is spoken of we find example of our neighbor and our enemies please remember these topics in our scriptures they are not meant for evaluating others these topics are meant for practicing in our own life with others we only have one attitude of service that is the only way otherwise we will be lost this point is also brought out in these qualities with this bhagwan begins this 16th chapter now before we enter the 16th chapter let us take a purview of the whole bhagavad gita up to 15th chapter from the theme of this chapter point of view first 
if goodness leads to weakness it is despondency and depression goodness can never lead to weakness but this is what was mistaken by arjun in the first chapter he started taking himself to be goody 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 and as a result of that goody goodiness he started having a self pity he started having an attitude wherein he is withdrawal from the battlefield which was born out of weakness and not with with strength was glorified as good qualities please remember virtues are not weaknesses virtue is a strength and therefore we should not mistake that daivi prakriti the divine qualities are the weaknesses of life and this is what arjun has understood and therefore he has been asked to understand this in this 16th chapter so first then the second chapter there is only one way if we want to be under the shelter of the divine qualities and that one way is only to get establish or near the proximity of the absolute and therefore in the first chapter first part of the second chapter of gita bhagwan sri krishna told about this absolute reality na jayate amriyate va vipashchit nayam bhutva bhavita vana bhuyaha ajo nitya shashrato yam puranaha na hanyate hanya mane sharire when this absolute thing we hear we imagine that we are fit for this absolute knowledge but no it should not only become as a part time time pass but it must become a full time spiritual life and for that karmanne va adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana unless we are able to withdraw naturally we must keep ourselves busy and never let under any condition to the state of weakness depression dejection etc then in the third chapter bhagwan told how do we achieve this the two principles he told yadna arthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma vandanah tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara so lead your life for some higher goal dedicate every moment for something higher the lord and lead your life with perfection and detachment mukta sanga samajar after that was done how do we do this in the fourth chapter we were told brahmarpanam brahmahavi brahmagnau brahmanautam change your vision and see that in and through every activity the divine is remembered or divine is manifested and for that the obstacle is removed in the fifth chapter where we were told that naiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manneta tatvavit that arrogance of doership should be discarded consciously let us understand the things are happening according to divine will and for that if we just look back in our life we come to know that there are many things which have happened not very much because we deserve but very much because of the divine grace so when we start recognizing the divine grace in our life then we are entering a new area called as devotion and for that in the 6th chapter bhagwan says devotion does not mean dependence on the lord Deven- uh, devotion means invocation of the self discipline so that we become a fit instrument for the lord to function through and therefore in the 6th chapter bhagwan has given us the yoga abhyas so that we become a fit instrument from the 7th to the 12th chapter bhagwan spoke about the reality from two standpoints 
from the manifestation standpoint and from the one's own experience standpoint and these two things he brought out in the 10th chapter etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tatvatah saha avikampena yogena jujjate natra samchaya he who is able to recognize the divinity in the total manifestation as the glory of the lord and he who is able to recognize his own divine nature essentially he alone is firmly rooted in this divine experience after that was over then in the 12th chapter he who has thus attained this what are his expression there the teacher spoke of advaishta sarva bhutanam maitra karuna eva cha nirmamo nirahankara etc so the 33 qualities were told that when a person is established in his absolute these are the natural expressions then in the 13th chapter bhagwan wanted to establish that the relative and the absolute are essentially one in the absolute relative has no existence but the relative can always be imagined projected in the absolute therefore let us associate ourselves with the absolute and not with the relative क्षेत्रज्ञम चापि माम विद्धि सर्व क्षेत्रेषु भारत एंड देयर आल्सो भगवान टोल्ड द हाईएस्ट टेक्निक इज द टेक्निक ऑफ डिवोशन देन इन द 14th चैप्टर द प्रकृति द थ्री गुणास आर एक्सप्लेन सो दैट वी कैन ट्रांसेंड द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द थ्री गुणास गुणातीत पुरुष द वन हु इज फंक्शनिंग थ्रू द थ्री गुणा सत्व रजस्तमस but he who is beyond the limitations of these three gunas is the one which is the goal of our 14th chapter then in the 15th chapter we have just seen how this absolute reality is totally beyond the relativity and therefore purushottama yoga to be recognized as etar buddha buddhiman syat krita krutyascha bharata one's own self so that we have really fulfilled our existence as human being and this is the ultimate in life and then in the 16th chapter we are now entered these two types of prakrutis one prakruti is daivi and second is asuri rakshasi so what is that which prevents us from entering in the divine kingdom and what is that which is required to be cultivated so that we are well equipped to enter the divine the 16th chapter begins and this is how bhagwan now starts the 16th chapter shri bhagwan uvacha abhayam sattva samshuddhi ज्ञान योग व्यवस्थिति दानम दमश्च यज्ञश्च स्वाध्याय स्तप आर्जव अहिंसा सत्यमक्रोध शातिरपैशुनम दया भूतेश्वरो मदव हीरचापल तेज क्षमा शौचम अद्रोहो नाति भवन्ति संपदं दैवीं अभिजात भारत इन दीज थ्री वर्सेस भगवान एज एनुमरेटेड अभय सत्व संशुद्धि 
ज्ञान योग व्यवस्थिति ही दानम दमश्च यज्ञश्च स्वाध्याय तप आर्जव अहिंसा सत्यम अक्रोध त्याग शांति अपैशुनम दया भूतेषु अलोलुप्त मार्दव रीहि अचापल तेज क्षमा धृति शौचम अद्रोहो नातिमानिता सो टोटली ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स क्वालिटीज आर इन्यूमेरेट एंड दीज आर भवंती संपदम दैवीम अभिजात से मानव भारत द वन हु इज बॉर्न विद द डिवाइन क्वालिटीज ही इज असोसिएटेड विद दिस बिफोर वी गो इन टू ईच वन ऑफ दिस ट्वेंटी सिक्स let us understand one or two important points there are three types of uh, divine associations in our life first type of divine association is adhi bhautik adhi bhautik means our body is born out of pure parents are there impure parents also yes who are those impure parents whose pedigree is not traceable they are impure parents therefore getting married in a proper way is considered as the most important uh, aspect of any civilized society like the people are very proud of their uh, thoroughbred dogs but they themselves are ill bred that they don't care therefore first is adi bhautik shuddhi that is the divine aspect of our personality second is adhyatmik adhyatmik purity or divine divine aspect is when our personal lifestyle is leading to purification with every additional experience that is the adhyatmik spiritual uh, style lifestyle the third is adhi daivik because we have invoked the divine grace in and through all our activities and undertaking therefore we are under the shelter of our kuladevata the various gods that we visit we offer prayers and it is by the divine grace we can keep on the spiritual path this three are the daivim sampada sampadam and this is what bhagwan is explaining here in this 26 of them now let us enter one by one first is abhayam abhayam is abhiruta the fearlessness now you will see everything in life has got meaning and value fearlessness should not be mistaken as a lifestyle where you are without fear doing the sins no about this and tell you fearlessness it happened here only in uh, 97 or 98 there was a children's camp and in that camp this i was teaching to the children this 26 values and in that first was fearlessness and after i explained them then we had in that camp on the third or fourth day the cartoon drawing competition who can draw the best cartoons so the children were busy and they are given time within one hour you have to complete your cartoon and then fix it on the wall and some panel and then they will be given the prize and the one boy who got the first prize was so quiet and so indifferent never he used to laugh he is simply like this is something wrong with him he got the first prize and his cartoon was the best on the basis of this fearlessness first picture i am fearless and therefore stands on the road 
second cartoon the truck is coming but i am fearless and the truck runs over him he is flat second cartoon and in the second cartoon when he is on the flat on the floor road there is you know a bubble and a world i think i should have tried with a car not with a truck <laughs> so fearlessness does not means foolishness friends fear is an asset as well as a liability fear becomes an asset when we are afraid to go the wrong way in life see for example we have respect and reverence for our elders and the respect and reverence is a kind of fear and when we are functioning under this fear of respect and reverence what happens we remain self controlled see like suppose i respect my parents and then i am in a company where somebody is offering me drinks and smoke and every kind of thing but i said no my parents have never done all these things if they will know about it they will get hurt you know and i don't want to hurt them you know therefore i am not going to do this so this is fear born out of reverence for the parents who are not present see therefore this fear is an asset it is not a liability similarly fear that how much time is left for us in this world hardly any time we don't know when we are going to get out of this world therefore let us not take one day for granted in life let us get ourselves involved completely and totally on the spiritual path else we may miss so this fear of shortage of time will keep us fully and completely involved in our spiritual life so this is one aspect of the fear no bhagwan is talking about abhiruta freedom from the fear means what fear like whether i will be able to do it or not i don't know whether anybody has ever reached the goal or not am i just trying out of frustration is it that you know people may say that oh you are becoming you know this uh, satsang oriented uh, is there something wrong in your life something has happened this kind of fear what people will say when we walk the spiritual path is not a good sign see one must be very fully convinced of what we are doing in life abhayam otherwise many times you know out of this so called foolish society's undue importance we destroy our own life we must know clearly the goal of our life the path we have chosen and the commitment to walk this path to reach the goal this can come only when we are leading a fearless life fearless to live our own conviction and without this fearless even the terrorists cannot be terrorists whether they are doing right or wrong is not our concern we have to learn from them that how much fearless they are without that they will never discard their own life for the cause for what they are committed abhayam abhiruta then second is sattva samshuddhi here sattva samshuddhi means what sattvasya antakaranasya samvyavahareshu paravanchana maya andrutaadi parivarjanam shuddha bhavena vivaharah ityartah so sattvasya antakaranasya samshuddhi sattva samshuddhi means the uh, purity of intentions while we are interacting with the world see how beautiful bhagwan shankara writes our intentions must not have 
वन परवंचना परवंचनम मीन्स कंडेमिंग अदर्स देन माया माया मीन्स द वॉट इज देअर इज नॉट मेंट बाय वर्ड्स माया एंड द थर्ड इज अंद्रुत ऑलवेज टेकिंग द सपोर्ट ऑफ द रॉन्ग मीन्स वेन दिस थ्री थिंग्स आर टोटली एबसेंट वाइल्ड इंटरेक्टिंग विद द वर्ल्ड देन आवर अटेंशन इज ऑन द क्वालिटी ऑफ आवर माइंड विच रिमेन्स एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इंटरेक्टिंग विद द वर्ल्ड this point also i told you number of times when we interact with the world there are three places where we can get lost one place the world we get so much enchanted in the world that we lose ourselves like you know the children when they are playing with the toys and all that they get so lost they have no other concern about anything one way second place we get lost is in our own experiences so when we get lost in the world that is called as artha purushartha we want to acquire more and more and more when we get lost in the experience that is called as kama purushartha fulfilling our desire through indulgence and third is we get lost in our own individuality called as dharma purushartha and as long as we get caught up in this dharma artha and the kama we can never think of something higher therefore sattva samshuddhi means not getting lost in any three of them but focusing attention on the purification of the heart and thus with every additional interaction we grow wise and the sign of wisdom is lack of ego otherwise like bhagwan said to arjun in the second chapter ashochanan vashochastvam pradnyavadamscha bhashase gata suna gata suscha nanu shochanti panditah Arjun you are talking like a wise man and crying who is a wise man who doesn't cry see therefore with every additional experience are we growing wise or not this should be our criteria of living our life and what is the wisdom what is the sign of wisdom is two principles never forget them refuse to be miserable and keep yourself cheerful in spite of the world around in this th- two things you follow in life you have done karma yoga you have done ashtanga yoga you have done bhakti yoga and you have completed the jnana yoga rest of the things will follow if you are miserable and disgusted and doing everything for everybody you are not having karma yoga you are having karma rog be very clear if you are frustrated and rejected you are not having bhakti yoga you are having emotional bankruptcy if you are disgusted and not happy you are not practicing yoga abhyas you are trying to remove the spondylosis through the halasan it will become more therefore friends please remember chatva samshuddhi every interaction with the world leads to more and more purification of the mind now what are the signs of purification once i told you this uh, freedom from misery and cheerfulness second sign when our mind becomes purer and purer our hunger to know the truth becomes intense we are no more attracted too much towards the relative world we became more and more intensely involved in our spiritual practice and intensity of involvement is not becoming serious but remaining sincere seriousness is different 
Sincerity is different. Abhayam sattva samshuddhi. Now like that, you know, with this you can always add this verb and make a sentence. Abhayam uh, bhavati sampadam daivi uh, ja, abhijatasya bharata. Then sattva samshuddhi bhavati sampadam daivim abhijatasya bharata, etc. Then the third is jnana yoga vyavasthiti. Here Bhagavan Shankara's comment is very good. Jnana yoga vyavasthiti. Jnanam shastrataha acharyataha cha atmadi padarthanam avagamaha. Avagama, uh, avagatanam indriya adi upasamharena ekagrataya svatma samvedyata padanam yogaha. Tayoho jnana yoga yoho vyavasthiti vyavasthanam tad nishthata. Esha Pradhana Daivi Satviki Sampat. See how nicely it is brought out. First, what is the meaning of Jnanam? This is how you know, we learn how to read the scriptures. Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti. Each and every word is analyzed. First, Jnana. What is Jnana? Then, what is Yoga? Then, what is the Vyavasthiti? And then a collective meaning. Then only our understanding becomes clear and vivid. So first, what is Jnanam? Shastrataha Acharyataha Atmadi Padarthanam Avagamaha Avagamaha is recognition. Remember I told you, all the roots indicating movement are used for knowledge. So Gama Gacha is the Dhatu. So Avagamaha is recognition or knowledge. Because Gama Gacha and when you apply the prefix upasarga ava, so it avagamyate, avagachati, it is here also avagamaha knowledge. So, jnanam shastrataha acharyataha, shastrataha from the scriptures. And never study the scriptures without the help of the acharya. Otherwise, we will start interpreting the scriptures what is convenient to us, like Arjuna did in the first chapter of Gita. He was quoting scriptures, left and right, to support his own decisions of withdrawal from the battlefield. No. Never give up in life. Otherwise, we have seen many people, you know, they get frustrated in life and then they go to some kind of ashrams and there then they want to become something like uh, this thing, that thing or a trustee and all that and there they start what they did not do in other place there they start there because they have not withdrawn with understanding therefore Shastrataha Acharyataha it is something like this you know when we study the scriptures without the help of a teacher, Acharya, and only taking the books in the hand, reading with a dictionary, is like ripening the fruits under artificial conditions. Like, you know, the bananas are brought, mangoes are brought, and artificial heat is given to them, and then they are slowly, slowly ripened. And the other one is like when the fruits are ripened on the tree without any additional effort, slowly, slowly the sweetness and the taste is different in the same manner. When we are studying the scriptures with the help of the scriptures and the teacher, Acharitaha, that is called as Jnanam. And knowledge about what? Atmadi padarthanam avagamaha. So, what is atma? What is anatma? Atma adi. So, what we have seen in the 13th chapter. Purusham prakritim jaiva vidhyanadi ubhavapi. As well as kshetradnyam chapi maam vidhi sarva kshetri shubharata. So, this clear understanding about the Prakriti, the Purusha, the Jiva Jagat Ishvara, the spiritual practice such as Nirmana Moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, Adhyatma Nitya, Vinrutta Kama, the practice of knowledge 
అమానిత్వం అదంబిత్వం అహింసా క్షాంతిరాజవం ఆచార్యోపాసనం శౌచం స్థైర్యం ఆత్మ వినిగ్రహ వాట్ ఇస్ గివన్ ఇన్ ద థర్టీన్ చాప్టర్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ చాప్టర్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీవేర్ థ్రూ అవుట్ భగవద్గీత దాట్ ఈజ్ ఆత్మాది పదార్థానాం అవగమ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ద కరెక్ట్ మీనింగ్ అండ్ పర్పోర్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ దీస్ వర్డ్స్ యూజ్ ఇన్ ద స్క్రిప్చర్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఆత్మ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఈశ్వర వాట్ ఈస్ ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ జీవ వాట్ ఈస్ ద పర్పస్ ఆఫ్ ద థియరీ ఆఫ్ క్రియేషన్ గివన్ ఇన్ ద స్క్రిప్చర్స్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ టు ప్రూవ్ దట్ దేర్ ఇస్ ద క్రియేషన్ ఆర్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ టు బ్రింగ్ అవర్ అటెన్షన్ టు ద అన్చేంజింగ్ సబ్స్టాటమ్ ఊర్ధ్వమూలమద శాఖం అశ్వత్థం బ్రాహురవ్యయం ఛందాంసి యశ్చ పర్ణాని యస్తం మేన సవేద విత్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద పర్పస్ ఇన్ దిస్ మ్యానర్ understanding clearly the scriptural import through the teaching of the acharya the teacher this is called as jnanam see that's why you know many people have this funny notion that we can know it is something like you know i know english very good so therefore i will uh, like to study sanskrit with the knowledge of english because uh, this uh, um physics for example the physics is written in english physics may be written in english but physics is a different subject english is only a language medium that is not the subject in the same manner scriptures talking about the reality is a different subject altogether because we know sanskrit that doesn't mean we we'll understand it so now avagatanam this is another very important topic avagatanam we have studied the scriptures from the teacher shravanam is complete then we are practicing mananam now and then when we don't sleep you know the meaning of mananam remaining awake in life is mananam and then the third thing comes nididhyasan single pointed commitment and involvement on the spiritual path is nididhyasan when these three things have happened yet there is no success in life what is the reason the reason is we have no control over our senses our mind our mind and our senses they are uncontrolled dusht ashwa iva sarathe he where from it comes katho upanishad it may be coming we don't know remember there atmanam rathinam vidhi shariram ratham evatu indriyani hayanahu yahu ahu and uh, um విషయాన్ ఇంద్రియ గోచరాన్ మన ప్రగ్రహవాన్ నర అండ్ వెన్ దీస్ సెన్సెస్ అండ్ ద మైండ్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ అండర్ కంట్రోల్ దెన్ దుష్ట అశ్వా ఇవ సారథే హే లైక్ ద అన్కంట్రోల్డ్ టెరిబల్ ఇన్డిసిప్లిన్ హార్సెస్ పుల్ ది చారియట్ టు డిస్ట్రక్షన్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ మ్యానర్ అవర్ అన్కంట్రోల్డ్ సెన్సెస్ weak mind takes us away from the spiritual path and therefore there are people who have very sincerely studied with all good intentions but the second part of their life self control was not given due importance as a result their progress is hampered or delayed and therefore jnana yoga vyavasthiti so what is the yoga yoga is avagatanam those who have studied and known everything about the scriptures indriya aadi upasamharena by total and complete withdrawal of all the sense organs ekagrataya thereafter focusing that harvested energy for something higher what is that something higher swatma samvedyata padanam swatma samvedita becoming aware of one's own being apadanam attainment 
So attainment of being aware of one's own being, this is called as yoga. So jnana yoga vyavasthiti hi, jnanam shastrataha acharyataha cha, atmadi padarthanam avagamaha avagatanam indriyadi upasamharena ekagrataya swatma samvedyata apadanam yogaha. Now the yoho of these two, jnana and the yoga, the yoho, jnana yoga yoho, vyavasthiti hi vyavasthanam tan nishthata. Vivastiti means what? Firm abidance. You know, this thing we come across with many of the grastas. They have got only one um, thing as an excuse. Now, I mean, it is okay for sannyasis, but for the grastas, it is justified to be miserable. You are a grasta is not an obligation to the Lord. It is not that, you know, we should have, you know, um, concession everywhere. Others require 98% marks to get admission, but because we are in a special class of human beings. Therefore, we may get only 2% marks and yet we should get admission. And others have to study hard to get uh, grades. For us, there should be a special professor appointed who will write, reply on our behalf. This kind of thing is not acceptable on the spiritual path. You have to live your life, you have to die your death. No proxy. Therefore, tan nishtata vyavasthanam firm abidance. And friends, we all live what we are convinced with. As on today, we are all convinced that we are the body. There our total life is body oriented. Therefore, all the experience, gains and the failures, achievements and the non-achievements, honor and dishonor of this waking world is the only concern for us because we are living with this conviction that I am the body and with the gross body identification this gross world becomes so solid reality. Therefore, unless we are convinced of Atmadi Padarthanam Avagama what is our correct identity? And although we have understood but we are not able to get out of viparita jnanam, contrary knowledge. Now what is the reason? Because we are still remaining slaves of our senses, our mind, our intellect, etc. And this is what is called as jnana yoga yostitihi, firm abidance in the knowledge, conviction and living that conviction in our life is called as jnana yoga yostitihi. So, Esha Pradhana Devi Satviki Sampat. This is the primary and the foremost divine quality to walk the spiritual path. See how beautiful it is. Now, these three words put together, we'll try to understand. Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhi Jnana Yoga Vyastiti. We will be fearless only when our knowledge and our ability is undoubted and firm and final. Then only we will be fearless. See? Fear comes in our life first on account of one's own doubt and second thing, what people will say. Those who are living their life, what people will say, they can never achieve anything in life. And to attain that fearlessness, the first thing is Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti. And to get that Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti, what is required is Sattva Samshuddhi. Sattva Samshuddhi is the ability to learn, the ability to practice the knowledge, the willingness to change oneself. 
This is all put together is Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhihi Jnana Yoga Vyavasthitihi. So, Yatra Chayesham Adhikrutanam Ya Prakrutihi Sambhavati Satviki Sa Uchate. Now, what are the different kinds of divine prakriti among the different class of people? This is now said. Now this Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhi Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti, this is the topmost. If we have this, all other things will follow. Now, there are people with different uh, specialities. First speciality, they have sufficient wealth. So those who are wealthy, for them, what is the divine disposition? Dhanam yatha shakti samvibhagaha annadinam now the first step is dhanam. Dhanam is what? Dhanam is charity or sharing with what we have. You know what happens? When we share with what we have, we still have the value and importance for what we have as an asset. It is something like this, you know. I give something to somebody with a view that this charity or this uh, thing which I am giving will be useful for that purpose or for that person. Now see, when, for example, on a birthday of a child, what we do? We go and give him uh, a pen. What? Why for? So that, you know, it will be useful to him. But why did you buy such an expensive Parker pen for him? No, no, I didn't buy. It was, you know, a gift to me from somebody. And I was just thinking to whom to give. So, both the things are achieved in one way. One, I could give the charity also gift and second thing it will be useful for him so you will always see in the process of donation charity sharing the value for the worldly objects is kept intact as long as the values for the worldly things are kept intact we are not in the first category Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhihi Jnana Yoga Vyavasthitihi In our mind, value and importance for the worldly things is still intact. That is not the purity of the heart. See? It's a very subtle point. Therefore, more than dhanam is important tyaga. When it comes, we will take it there. Then shouldn't we do charity? No, no, you do charity. Then with a clear understanding. Is this charity leading to Sattva Samshuddhi or not? Be very attentive. If the charity is going to create a kind of arrogance in us, that I have given this much, I have done that much, then it is better that you don't practice charity. Because by giving charity, you are creating a load of arrogance of good work on your own head. That is no good. See? The correct charity is known by Punjabis. They call it Nekikar Kue Medal. Do good and forget about it. But we not only don't want to forget, we want that the whole world should remember. Forget about our forgetting. Therefore, this 6 inch by 2 inch stone was fixed by so and so in the memory of so and so as told by so and so for the purpose of so and so in the presence of so and so the whole family tree is printed on that small bit of stone and it is fixed on the floor of some 
river or temple and nobody ever reads that even once no 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 this is charity you know unless we give how this thing will be built up so we give ram 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 whether others are benefited or not god will decide but if we are destroyed it is confirmed therefore what is to be done with this charity should we stop no then remember one thing if we do charity it is our need the world doesn't need if you have this attitude in life you will see you will grow spiritually now this principle that day i also told you among the many dana vidya dana is one dana is it not now why the teachers teach with so sincerity is not because the disciples need it is we who need if we do not teach this knowledge it will become a rustiness it is necessary and therefore be very attentive a teacher who has respect and reverence for the presence of the student alone can teach with purity and love but if the teacher has this arrogance i am teaching you the ignorant ones whether the students will be benefited or not god knows but the teacher will be destroyed and the, what is the destruction he will lose the charm of his life do remember i told you once about one of my friend has been teaching upanishads gita to a good number of people with sincere involvement for last not a day or two but for last more than about 20 years very highly educated from a very respected family good society a good standing in the society but in the heart of his heart he has forgotten to laugh what is the reason i am the teacher and i am teaching everybody so i have to be all the time serious why i am carrying the load of wisdom on my head such people may be helping others but they are destroying themselves friends knowledge makes us immune if we suffer in life knowledge when converted into wisdom makes us happy and relax in life with this understanding when the teaching process is taken then it is danam and it becomes an asset otherwise the same danam becomes a load i think i had told you this this i learned from one of my marwadi friend i was going from somewhere to calcutta calcutta i remember where from i was going i don't know and that person came he used to come for the lecture and uh, never spoke a single word so i was happy i don't have to also speak and when i got into the train first class compartment and uh, he came in my that came in and after having come he came to namaskar i said how are you mahatma ji fine yes he took out slowly 10000 rupees 100 rupees notes and gave it to me i said gus de rahe ho kya are you give me bribe or what he said no no swami ji i just wanted to give you i said i don't need it because the ticket is already there and somebody will come to pick me up so please take it back i don't need it you give it to some somebody for some good cause you know what he said he said swami ji you don't need it i know that but i need need to give you it is my need that i am giving you not your need see the difference the day we understand this the charity that we practice is our need then satva samshuddhi 
then our heart will start becoming purer and purer. Now the question is, how this attitude that charity is our need will purify our heart, for that we have to understand what exactly dhanam or charity means. See, dhanam or charity means what? First, the value for the worldly objects is still intact in our mind. So with the wealth, I am rich. With the knowledge, I am educated. Good. Now this I, which is created as a result of this possession of wealth or knowledge, has to be diluted. Dilution of the I is a removal of the element of my from our life. Lesser the my, weaker the I. If zero my, absolute is the I. This is the rule. So whatever wealth we have, what is the wealth? This is my money. So the money is not a problem. But the minus associated with the money is the problem. So what do I do in charity? I remove the minus associated with the money. Meaning that much mamata is reduced from my mind for that wealth. A reduction of mamata, if this is happening, then we are practicing dhanam as a daivi sampatti at a divine disposition. But if we are practicing dhanam and becoming more and more arrogant with a notion that because of us only the whole world is surviving, then it is becoming the Rakshasi Prakriti. Therefore, dhanam, so whatever we have, if we share it with the world, it must lead to the purification of the heart then the dhanam becomes the daivi prakriti. Here Bhagavan has used the word yatha shakti samvibhagaha annadi nam, like the food, etc. Now you must have seen, you know, when we give somebody something to eat, because it is going waste when we give, should we call it as a charity? No. It is utilization of the waste material, recycling. That is not the way. Therefore, annadinam, anything which is consumable, usable, must be given with a view, not that the world needs, but it is our need, therefore we give. Then, second is dhanam, damascha. Damaha is what? Bhaiya karananam upashamaha. Antak karanasya upashamam shanti vakshati. About the control or the quietness of the mind will be told subsequently. But now we take only Dhamaha. Bhaiya Karnanam Upashamaha Dhamaha. Dhamma means control of our external faculties. What is the control of our external faculties? You know, the other day somebody has got one TV and kept in my room here. Ramiji will fix it for you. You don't have TV. I said, okay, fix it now. Now I am going out. I will get it done later. But you promise you will get it. I said, yes, I promise you. I will get it done. So the TV is still sitting there in my drawing room. Not open. Two, three times for Swami Ji. Did you fix the TV? I said, yes, I have fixed it. You are telling straight lies. I said, I don't hesitate. That is the only way I can control myself from the world. I said, go on, justify and talk. Yeah, yes, I am really enjoying, really enjoying. See, because I have seen, I had a friend, he is no more. He was so addicted, he was a Swami, so addicted to TV. Ram, Ram, Ram. And number of serials were on his desk. Uh, Junoon. Those days Junoon was going on. I don't know what are the Junoon. And few of them. 
and he was so much you know when that particular program comes then he forgets everything he closes his room but swami is doing meditation <laughs> ram ram how much we get involved there are people who just cannot imagine that they will miss a particular episode and then who is responsible for that therefore you know like many people with reference to the tv they tell me swami ji in your lecture please mention for the teenagers you know they are getting spoiled because of the tv i said okay i'll mention and i mentioned in my talks very clearly it is the elders who are spoiled by the tv more than the youngsters youngsters have at least something to do elders have nothing to do so they are constantly stuck to that tv and don't allow anything to happen in the house i know one house in bombay they have got one room only you know bombay that chal type of houses one room and one small kitchen come bedroom come bathroom come everything it's a small place and in the drawing room which is hardly 10 by 10 there the father in law is unemployed he retired himself pre major retirement 25 years before so uh, about 20 years or so he served something and then he took vrs and imagine 25 years he is sitting and only watching tv 24 hours nothing else so the daughter in law cannot say anything the grandson tells dada ji how much tv you are watching this is bad for your health you can imagine bahya karana naam upashamaha the freedom to control the faculties from roaming in the field of their subjective their objective areas no means no one simple rule i'll tell you to practice this we have to learn to say no if you don't learn how to say no you will be destroyed earlier i was not knowing this art of saying no so swami ji please take this arm in leg they will go on feeding you know indian mamas love means what feed them like a gunny bag you go on putting the cotton and stand on that and stuff more stuff like that so early i used to suffer a lot then i found how to say no how much you say no swami ji we know you just joke you know or i said it's serious it's not joke he'll put then one day i found one thing somebody was sitting next to me and to him something was given and he said no i don't like it and that lady has taken it back i said this is the better way so when i don't want don't want anything when they bring i said i don't like it okay then so if you don't like they will not give you but if you sincerely tell them that your stomach is full no no you take little more so damaha bahya karana nam upashamaha we have to control our faculties with very strong word no means no and once we have learned the art of saying no none of the things will ever tempt us in world life and not only we should also uh say no but we also must have the ability to listen no in life those who have never heard no in life they become extremely susceptible to even this much of defeat in life this happens particularly those children who are hum do hamara aadha aadha those who have never shared anything with their brother sister because there are no brother sisters those you have never shared with anybody uncle aunty because there is no uncle aunty and all the time uh, elders are not allowed to enter my room unless accompanied by a child could you believe this kind of posters are in the houses in the rooms of the children 
if you enter with some suggestions better go back and the no tolerance and when such children grow up and go in the world and in the world first time they listen no from the world they become totally shattered and frustrated i have seen one case one girl she uh, became mad only because she has to hear no she was totally mentally paralyzed at 28 years very beautiful looking very smart very intelligent girl only because she has to hear once no totally gone therefore bahya karana nam upashamaha damaha it is extremely necessary then only avayam sattva samshuddhi jnana yoga vyavasthiti will come these are all supporting ones and the primary one is avayam sattva samshuddhi jnana yoga vyavasthiti then uh, next is दानम दमश्च यज्ञश्च न यज्ञश्च यज्ञ श्रौत अग्निहोत्रादि स्मार्ता च देवयज्ञादि यज्ञ हियर भगवान शंकर टेकन द ट्रेडिशनल मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड यज्ञ विच इंडिकेट्स दैट द गृहस्थाज आर सपोज टू डू अग्निहोत्र एज ए पार्ट ऑफ देअर लाइफ अग्निहोत्र इज कॉल्ड एज दि नित्य कर्म the daily duties associated with the married life which are the daily duties yajna means what keeping the fire lit in the house all the time now what is the meaning of keeping the fire lit all the time in the house you know in the earlier days when gas and electricity was not much available they have to keep the Uh, fire in their cooking place lit all the time 24 hours of the day so any atithi anybody coming has to be honored with respect and given food so this is called as the yajna agnihotradi so they are supposed to do the daily yajna karma and keep the fire lit in the house so this was called as the uh, shrauta yajna shrauta means according to vedas shruti is veda shrauta is concerning the vedas second is smarta yajna they are called deva yajna this is pauranik according to purana you know we are god our uh, puja and then satyanarayan katha and various kinds of regular things keep on coming around the year though they are called as the smart so yajna means various kinds of spiritual activities to be practiced in life so that we do not forget the divine principle as an important component of our lifestyle that lifestyle whatever may be the prosperity if it is not intermingled with spirituality it leads to perversion prosperity without the foundation of spirituality leads to perversion and perversion has no end what is the height of perversion that can be reached by human beings and that height of uh, perversion reach is marrying the same sex legally and moving in the society as the success of freedom there cannot be any more perversion than this kind of lifestyle therefore yajna shrauta and the smarta they introduce the element of divinity in our lifestyle through the authority of the scriptures there are some more aspects of this yajna we'll take in our next class om purnamada purnamidam purna atpurnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti
Shanti, 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 Hari Om, Sri Guru Pyo Namaha, Hari Om.